every Thursday we would kind of talk about exploring community food issues and I'd have them map out what they wanted to see in their communities. So every morning we would start with a game because we always played games. So that's, um, <coughs> these are our students playing with a game and this is me teaching. So we would talk about um, our main food issues which are corner stores, vacant lots, the um, and even dispersal of grocery stores, the school lunches, the chronic illness such as diabetes and heart disease, um, industrial agriculture, the treatment of migrant um, and refugee workers, and monoculture. So as we went through it, we kind of would identify the issues that were really, really important to us through an exercise called community mapping. So when we are looking at issues that our community has, it's much easier to kind of visualize it and draw out the problem, I've noticed. Um, we were talking about corner stores, and um, I remember one of my teenagers, Deanne, he drew out one, he just drew out Grant Street, and he put every single corner store that we saw. And within eight blocks, there were 18, which was amazing, because who would have thought that there were so many corner stores? So um, community mapping is just something that we use to kind of articulate their points and really show how big of an impact these issues can have. So as we went through it, we looked through this map um, done by this group in Maine called the Beehive Collective. And this was mainly about social problems in um, Central America, um, with major conglomerates taking advantage of the workers there. But this is just something that we could look through to kind of give an example of what a community map, community, uh, <laughs> what a community map could be. So moving on from that, they would look through that, and then they would draw their own. And they would present what their main issues were. This was about grocery stores and how there was only one um, within every uh, few miles. And everybody would present their map. And at the end of the day, we would talk about making persuasive speeches. I wasn't there on Fridays, but every Fridays, they would make a speech based on their individual food issue. And they would kind of hypothetically give a speech to Mayor Brown, and they would have to convince Mayor Brown that that was the issue of choice, and that they should get funding for their individual project to cure their issue. So, um, and at the end of the day, every day we would do something called straight talk, which would give all the positives of a lesson and then all the things that would necessarily need to be changed. We called them deltas instead of negatives, because that's nicer. So um, we did that every time, and that was really productive. And then at the end of the day, for a wrap up, we would play a game. Again, my personal favorite is Extreme Rock, Paper, Scissors. It was extremely fun summer, so I just had a really fun summer. Not so much research-based, but just kind of teaching, and I should be better at public speaking since I've done it all summer, but you know, I'm working with it. So um, it was a really, really amazing summer. I really got to know a lot of the kids. Um, it helps that we're kind of the same age, <laughs> but um, I really did enjoy my summer. I loved working at MAP. I'd like to thank Gene and Megan for giving me this opportunity, and I loved working with Rebecca and all the interns. So I had a really good summer, and that's it. Awesome. Thank you.